Thanks, everybody. So my name is Erin uh, Cuttington. I am a physician that works in Regina uh, with the Accountable Care Unit team. Um, my project was looking at antimicrobial stewardship and specifically asymptomatic bacteria and um, a look at whether discussing it in a standardized way at our bedside rounds would um, reduce antibiotic use for um, the indication of asymptomatic bacteria. Our aim statement and what we wanted to do is reduce the number of antibiotic days for asymptomatic bacteria by 50% on a medical ward at the Pasqual Hospital by June of 2023. So obviously the project is still ongoing. Um, the antimicrobial stewardship team and the accountable care unit physicians had a desire to uh, improve the appropriateness of antibiotic stewardship in our acute care setting. Um, the antimicrobial stewardship had already been doing some point prevalence surveys about antibiotic use on our medical ward. So we were able to use this as some of our baseline data and found that um, for their point prevalence surveys, asymptomatic bacteria seemed to be the most uh, commonly um, common use of antibiotics on our wards on a few different point prevalence surveys. And obviously, um, asymptomatic bacteria is not supposed to be treated with antibiotics, uh, so it was one that was inappropriate 100% of the time. Uh, so we use this point prevalence survey to sort of help us scope our project, um, as obviously antimicrobial stewardship is a large, a large thing to try to tackle all at once. Um, as you can see, we had uh, a lot of different change ideas about how to um, tackle this problem um, because of the existing structure that we had with the um, interdisciplinary rounds. We decided to leverage this to see if we could standardize a process to discuss the appropriateness of antibiotic therapy um, and specifically um, asymptomatic bacteria at our bedside rounds. Uh, to put this into place, we engaged our antimicrobial stewardship team, of course, um, the unit management, the um, pharmacists that actually worked day to day with the physicians on the unit, the pharmacy unit, um, and we did involve some of our patient and family partners with the um, sort of where we got to with the project. Their role was quite minor, but um, going forward, they will certainly have more input, which is wonderful. Um, due to multiple delays, I think as everybody else has had, um, we were only able to get very preliminary data collection um, and it was mostly um, like a process audit uh, for the first PDSA cycle that we um, put in place. One of the surprising things was that it looked like we didn't have very many um, antibiotics that were discussed at our bedside rounds, which of course was surprising. Um, however, when we discussed this with one of our um, students that was helping with the data collection, uh, it ended up being a problem with definitions just because she assumed that the pharmacist saying the patient isn't on antibiotics meant that it wasn't discussed. And that was just a difference in opinion um, about whether it was discussed or not. So um, that number doesn't look great, but on clarification, and working with the team, we found out that it was just a communication error. As far as next step for the projects, more data collection is what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be looking for more data to see whether our intervention is actually going to be successful because we haven't started to collect any of that data. So that's going to be our next steps for the project. And as far as key learnings and reflections from the project, but also from CQIP is uh, dream big, but start small. So scoping the project is really important. I think we all have grand ideas about what think, ways that we can make the system better, but just making sure that the, the project is doable um, and a reasonable scope is really important. Obviously my personal experience is that definitions are very important to making sure that all of your team members are on the same page. And then one of the last things that I thought was really key is, um, finding a way to feed the uh, results back to the team that you're working with is really important to make sure that you have their engagement um, in your QI project. So feeding it back to the frontline workers is obviously uh, an important next step and we look forward to working through that. And finally, thank you to the Sequit program, uh, my coaches and all the fellow participants for making this a wonderful, fulfilling course. I can't wait to continue doing QI work.